Ever wondered how to simplify Boolean functions using k-maps? Welcome to the fascinating world of Carnor maps, or as most like to call them, k-maps. These ingenious tables are an essential tool in the world of digital electronics and computer engineering, used to simplify Boolean functions and minimize logic gates. The k-map is a visual representation of a truth table, displaying the results of a Boolean function in a grid format. This makes it easier to identify patterns and reduce the complexity of the function. So why are we talking about k-maps? Well, they play a pivotal role in digital design, helping to create more efficient circuits. They are also a fantastic way to understand and visualize Boolean algebra, which is the foundation of all digital design. In this video, we're going to delve into the process of creating and using k-maps for functions with five and six variables. You might be thinking, but wait, I thought k-maps only go up to four variables. Well, that's true, but with a little clever trick, we can extend them to handle more variables. For a five-variable function, we use a four-variable k-map and treat one variable as a don't care. This means that it doesn't matter whether this variable is true or false. It won't affect the outcome of the function. When dealing with a six-variable function, we use an eight-variable k-map and treat two variables as don't cares. This might sound a bit complicated now, but don't worry, we'll walk you through every step of the process. To fill in these k-maps, we'll be using the truth table of our Boolean function. Once we've filled in the values, we'll use the k-map to simplify the Boolean expressions of our functions. Now that we know what k-maps are and why they're useful, it's time to dive into the process of creating them. Stay tuned for the next scene where we'll start with a five-variable k-map. Let's get started! Imagine you have a five-variable Boolean function. How do you create a k-map for it? Well, it's not as daunting as it may seem. We're going to break it down into manageable steps. First, we need to understand that a four-variable k-map can be used to represent a five-variable function. Yes, you heard it right, a four-variable k-map. This is achieved by treating one of the variables as a don't care. In the realm of Boolean algebra, a don't care condition is a state where the output is not essential. It could be either zero or one. This comes in handy when we have more variables than our k-map can handle. So let's say our five variables are A, B, C, D, and E. We are going to use a four-variable k-map and we'll treat E as our don't care. Now, onto the k-map. Picture a grid that is divided into 16 cells. The columns represent the combinations of variables A and B, while the rows represent the combinations of variables C and D. The cells will be filled based on the truth table of our Boolean function. A truth table, as you might remember, is a logical table that illustrates the possible values of a Boolean function. So for each combination of A, B, C and D, we'll fill in the corresponding cell in our k-map. If the function returns a 1 for a certain combination, we'll put a 1 in that cell. If it returns 0, we'll put a 0. If the function doesn't specify a value for a certain combination, remember E is our don't care. We can put either 0 or 1 and voila, you've created a k-map for a 5-variable Boolean function. It may seem like a handful at first, but with a bit of practice, it becomes second nature. That's how you create a k-map for a 5-variable Boolean function. But what if you have a 6-variable function? Well, stick around to find out. Now let's consider a 6-variable Boolean function. What does the k-map for this look like? You may wonder. The approach is similar to what we've done with a 5-variable function, but this time we'll be using an 8-variable k-map, treating two variables as don't cares. So imagine you have a 6-variable Boolean function with variables labeled as A, B, C, D, E, and F. To create a k-map for this, we'll use an 8-variable k-map and treat variables E and F as don't cares. The k-map should look something like this, CDGB 0001110, now let's fill in the k-map. We'll use the truth table of the Boolean function to determine the values for each cell. Remember, the don't cares can be used to either simplify the function or they can be ignored altogether. As we add values to the k-map, we can start to see patterns emerge. These patterns, or groups of ones, will help us to simplify the Boolean function. The larger the group of ones, the simpler the function. After the k-map is filled, we can apply the rules of Boolean algebra to minimize the Boolean function. This is where our don't cares come into play. They can be included in any group to help simplify the function. By following these steps, you've created a k-map for a six-variable Boolean function. With this, you have created a k-map for a six-variable Boolean function. 
Now how do you use these K-maps? Tune into our next scene to find out. You've created your K-maps. Now how do you use them to simplify your Boolean functions? Here's the fun part. Imagine your K-map as a puzzle, and your job is to solve it. To do this, you'll need to identify and group cells in the K-map. The aim is to form groups of ones, also known as min terms, which can be combined to simplify the function. Let's break it down. First, you'll need to group all adjacent ones in the K-map. Adjacency here is not just up, down, left or right, but also includes diagonal corners. Remember, a K-map is not flat. Think of it as a cylinder, or even a donut if you like. Groups can vary in size, but they must always be a power of two. That's one, two, four, eight, and so forth. Larger groups are always preferable as they simplify the function more significantly. Each group corresponds to a product term in the simplified Boolean expression. To create this term, you observe the variables that remain unchanged within the group. If a variable changes its value from zero to one or vice versa, it's not included in the term. Now, here's a neat trick. When a variable is in its true form, it's represented as it is. For example, A remains A. But when it's in its complemented form, it's represented with an overline. So A becomes A bar. Repeat this process for all groups and you'll end up with a simplified Boolean expression. This expression represents the same function as the original one, but it's much more streamlined and easier to implement in digital circuits. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you work with K-maps, the more intuitive the process becomes. It's like learning a new language. At first it might seem complicated, but with time, it becomes second nature. And that's how you use K-maps to simplify Boolean functions. Let's summarize what we've learned. Let's recap the key points we've covered in this video. Our journey began with an introduction to Carnor Maps, or K-maps, a strategic tool used to simplify Boolean functions. We dove into the process of creating these maps for five and six variable functions. In a five variable Boolean function, we learn to use a four variable K map. We label our variables as A, B, C, D, and E, and we treat one variable as a don't care. This don't care cell can be filled with any value, giving us the flexibility needed to simplify our Boolean function. For a six variable function, we stepped up to an eight variable K map. Here, we treat two variables as don't cares, providing even more room for simplification. Remember these don't care cells are not just placeholders. They are a vital part of the process, giving us the freedom to adjust our function for the simplest result. We also emphasize the importance of correctly labeling your variables. This is a critical step that can make or break the simplification process. Mislabeling can lead to confusion and errors, so make sure you're keeping track of your variables accurately. Finally, we delved into how we can use these K-maps to simplify our Boolean functions. Once we've filled in our values, we use the K-map to identify patterns and simplify our expressions. This process is not just about filling in cells, it's about understanding the underlying patterns and how they can be used to our advantage. In the grand scheme, these K-maps are not just tools for simplification, they are gateways to understanding the fundamental logic behind Boolean functions. They help us visualize and manipulate complex functions in a way that is intuitive and manageable. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep practicing these steps, and you'll be a pro at simplifying Boolean functions using K-maps in no time.